We say all praises be to the Creator, all power to His people. In the name of Yahshua, the Black Revolutionary Messiah, I greet you, my brothers and sisters, in the spirit of truth and the words of peace. Shalom alaikum. Give a special salute to the Black Messiahs. Our motto is stop waiting for a Savior and be one. Stop waiting for a Savior and be one. This morning, coming from the Gospel according to John, fourth chapter, beginning with the 31st verse. 31st verse. In the mean, while his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said to them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Therefore said the disciples, one to another, has any man brought him to eat? Yahshua said to them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Say not you, there are yet Say not you that there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, that for they are already white, are white already to harvest. And he that reaps receives wages and gathers fruit unto life eternal, that both he that sows and he that reaps may rejoice together. And herein is that same true. One soweth and another reapers. I sent you to reap that whereon you bestowed no labor. Other men labored and you entered into his labor. This morning, brothers and sisters, dealing with the subject, planting the seeds of knowledge. Planting the seeds of knowledge. In the scripture, the disciples are concerned about Yahshua because he's out there working. He's out there trying to save the people. He's out there trying to save the children of Israel. He's trying to wake the people up, being persecuted by the authorities being persecuted uh, and questioned and hated on by the Pharisees, the Sadducees, but he's still doing the work. And the disciples ask him, aren't you hungry? Can we get you something to eat? He said, my work is to finish the work of he who sent me. My meat, rather, is to finish the work of he who sent me. As many of us are trying to wake up our communities, are trying to fight the mental side, which is the mental genocide, the mental destruction of our youth, we get tired. We get frustrated sometimes. Sometimes we work long hours into the night 100 degrees, we standing on the corner, walking around, trying to reach the youth, and sometimes we get discouraged. We get hungry. But we got to be reminded our meat, our substance, our goal is to do the will of him that sent us and to finish the work. Yeshua talks about looking at the season. And when we're talking about looking at the seasons, we're talking about different dispensations, dispensations of time where th some things are required. There's a time to plant and there's a time for harvest. Yeshua was telling his disciples that Get in where you fit in. The work that I call you to do, you have not suffered like Moses. You have not suffered like Elijah. You have not suffered like Jeremiah. You have not suffered like the prophets. These are the people whose shoulders you stand on to do this work. 
to do this work. They planted the seeds hundreds of years ago. Now it's your turn to reap the harvest. Now, we're talking about seasons when you should be doing stuff. So in this work of saving our communities, we are simultaneously planting seeds and reaping the harvest. We are simultaneously planting seeds and reaping the harvest. We stand on the shoulders of people who have done this work hundreds of years before us. At the same time, we are continuing the work because the masses need the information and we are sowing more seeds. So we should never get outside of ourselves. <coughs> we should never get so pumped up and hyped on ourselves that we think it's all about us and when we get a, get tired, a little tired, or oh, I'm tired, I give up. You have not done anything yet to give up. When those before you have sacrificed so much more, risked their lives and their livelihoods to do this work, and you're just reaping the benefits of their work, and you tie. And you tie. They spent years and decades of researching books, studying, traveling before the internet, before social media, going around the country teaching this work, being hunted by the FBI, hunted by the State Department, hunted by the CIA. <coughs> and you read one book and you tie it. You read the work that they sacrificed their lives for and you tie it. Who am I talking about? We stand on the shoulders of people like Dr. Joseph Ben Yakana, Dr. Ben. We stand on the shoulders of Dr. John G. Jackson. We stand on the shoulders of Lerone Bennett Jr. We stand on the shoulders of George G.M. James. We stand on the shoulders of Dr. Ivan Van Sertema. We stand on the shoulders of Dr. Chancellor Williams and many, many more who sacrificed and planted the seeds when it was dangerous for black people to even know how to read. When they would kill you for even knowing how to read, would lit you for being an uppity Negro, and we complain like we got it so hard. We are reaping, we are harvesting from the work that others have done. But simultaneously, simultaneously, we are also, our duty is we are reaping and standing the shoulders of our ancestors who have tried to wake up our people, had to save our race, but at the same time, it's a new generation, a new dispensation. We are also planting seeds so others will one day reap the benefits of what we do. For some who've done the work before us, we are harvesting. We are organizing. We are saying the work's already been done. All we're doing is just reaping the benefits of the knowledge. But in the continuum, continuum of time, we're also planting seeds. We're breaking new grounds. We're dealing with things they didn't have to deal with. We're dealing with all the distractions of social media. We're dealing with a new high-tech mental side that gets our minds and the minds of our children. So we're also 
breaking new grounds, were fighting off state snakes, were also digging holes and planting seeds for this generation. So again, one day, people will reap the benefits of the seeds we plant. You know, the hard thing about being the one who's planting the seeds, you ain't going to get credit for the harvest. Nine times out of ten, you ain't going to get credit for the harvest. You might not even live to see the seed break ground. You might not even live to see that. So we can't be discouraged. We can't be dismayed. We can't give up when we don't see the fruits of our labor because those who came before us did not see the benefits now that we see now. See, we talk about our great scholars in retrospect. Everybody loves you when you're dead. And they talk about how great you are when you're dead. And the same people would not lift a finger to support them when they were living. You know, many of our great scholars, researchers, freedom fighters, died penniless. The ones we buy their books now, they were struggling when they were alive. Feeling unappreciated, attacked from both sides, ignored by the very people they were risking their lives to save. But the work continued. The work continues, and now we are reaping their harvest. It's time for us to reap their harvest and go and use their information and organize our people based on their work. But at the same time, brothers and sisters, we got to get, get out there and break new ground. And break new ground and wake our people up. One soweth and another reapeth, reaps. One sows and another reaps. As always, we leave you with the Black Messiah motto, stop waiting for a savior and be one. Shalom.